This is a primer on some GDPR compliance issues, definitions, some things that you need to be aware of as you navigate your world. If you're in the web development department, you're going to have a set of specific issues. If you're doing you know, application software development, another set of issues. If you're involved in prospecting and customer relations management, you're going to have a different set of issues. We're not going to cover the specifics today. What we're going to cover are the general things that everyone needs to be aware of so that we can increase and improve our compliance and our security when it comes to personal data. I'm going to go through some key definitions, practical considerations, some background that you need to be aware of as you go through your, your daily jobs. Definitions. Let's take a look at some of the key definitions here under GDPR. The first and most important definition is personal data. GDPR has created rights for everyone to own and control their personal data. If some third party's personal data is being captured or stored or processed by one of your systems, then you have to meet your GDPR obligation. So what is personal data? Well, data is the broad category of data that is going to identify a real person, the data subjects. Anything that will identify a real person, so that could be email address, phone number, physical address, but it, it's much broader than that. So it's any data that directly or indirectly or in reference to some other data could identify a person. It could be an IP address, the connection that they have to the internet, if it's if it's data that involves the identity of a physical person, then it is personal data. Some questions that you want to be thinking about as you navigate your world, as you go through your job. Do I have access to personal information, to personal data? Do our partner data processors have access to personal information? That is to say, to the people that we're working with or our platform provider or some of our vendors have access to personal information. If it's personal information and you're sharing that or uploading it to a server or doing anything with that personal information, then you're going to have to protect that personal information, be able to identify where it lives and be able to delete it or provide an audit on it on a person by person basis. All right. So let's take a look at another definition. What is a data processor? A data processor under the GDPR is a person or company which possesses personal data on behalf of the controller. Data processor is a company or vendor that is processing, which means dealing with personal data on behalf of a controller. We're going to talk about that in a minute, which is potentially your customer. So in your world, you are a data processor. Your customer is the controller of that personal data. They're the ones that are on the point. They get to decide what happens to it, what doesn't happen to it by contract or otherwise. So data processor, processing data, personal data, controller in charge of that personal data. A person or company which processes personal data, what is processing? It's an operation or set of operations which is performed on personal data. So it's basically anything, uploading, storing, recording, collecting, organizing, adapting, altering, retrieving, using personal information. So data processor, anyone that does anything with personal data. Who is a controller? Controller means the person or company which determines the purpose and means of the processing of personal data. They're the ones that contracted with you. They're in control of who they deal with, right? So they're the controller. Controllers have different obligations than processors in certain ways, but really the, there's a lot of overlap there. Both the controller and the data processor and even subprocessors they all have to make sure they're protecting that personal data. They know where that data lives. They can account for that data. They're identifying and telling you who it's, who it's being shared with. So as a software, as a service business, you are a controller when you decide the purposes and means of the processing. And the processors, you're a processor when you act under the instructions of the customer. What is a sub-processor? Subprocessor is a third-party data processor engaged by the data processor 
Luhanser will have access to or process personal data from a data controller. To the extent that we have a vendor that we're working with that's storing data, they would be a subprocessor. To the extent that we are providing data to some vendor to be able to provide support on our system, that would be a sub, potentially a subprocessor. Subprocessors typically are our vendors that we get for hosting, for data storage, for data processing, these types of things. If we're working with Salesforce on a CRM, and therefore we're taking the, our customer data and putting it into a CRM, then chances are that, that Salesforce in that case is a subprocessor. Now, the subprocessor, the data controller is your software as a service customer that we need to know what it is, where it goes, where it's stored, who we're sharing it with. That's the concept here. Forget all of these labels for a minute. Whenever we are dealing in personal data, we have to comply with GDPR. And that means we have to have contracts with everyone upstream, contracts with everyone downstream that are GDPR compliant. They're going to set forth all the, the rights and, and liabilities of all the parties inside. Let's just take a look at some practical considerations here. And this isn't going to cover all the bases, but... It's going to help us understand it. To the extent that we're going to have subprocessors, the processor needs to have the controller's written permission. What that means is we're going to have to disclose to our customer who all the subprocessors are, because we have to have permission to use those subprocessors. The terms regarding the usage of subprocessors can be regulated between the controller and the processor of the data in the data processing agreement. Let's take a look at this data processing agreement. Those subprocessors have agreements with us to protect data. Those are called data processing agreements or DPAs. And we've got them upstream and downstream with everyone. But if you have a new vendor you want to work with from your department that's going to have access to personal information, you need to let your manager know that there is going to be a sharing of personal information and you're going to need to make sure there's a data processing agreement in place with that new vendor that they are GDPR compliant. If the controller has approved uses of a subprocessor, the processor needs to establish a contract between a subprocessor that meets certain requirements. If new vendors come into, into, into our field of view, we need to go through a process to make sure they're GDPR compliant. It is also vital to notice that the processor who hires a subprocessor always will be liable to the controller regarding the subcontroller's compliance. What is it we're trying to accomplish here? GDPR provides individuals with eight rights to protect their private information. Information about these rights must be provided by the controller before the collection of data. So theaters need to let their users know they're collecting personal information and you as a user have these rights. These rights involve the right to be informed about who's got their data, the right of access, they need to be able to access their data, the right to rectification if there's a problem, the right to erasure. They have a right to say, I want all of my personal data erased. Someone's got to know where that specific person's data lives and be able to erase it. So portability, they need to be able to take their data with them. You need to be able to export it and provide it to them. And they need to have the right to object. In order to provide these rights to individuals, you got to know who's got the data. So let's take a look at um, some, some background, right? So these DPAs, these data processing agreements, which we do have in place, but we need to make sure we keep them in place for all the different people that we're dealing with. If we're white labeling a software and then remarketing that to a customer, we need to make sure we have a DPA with the with the provider of the service that we're white labeling. If we are integrating plugins or other things that are going to be able to store or process personal information, then we need to make sure that those also have DPAs in place with us, and most of them do. Data processors, us, need to sign data processing agreements with the data controllers they work with. It should contain a description of the adequate safeguards that are put in place for the processing of data. And having a DPA will not only ensure that you are complying with GDPR, but also ensures that any third parties you are dealing with are also compliant. What about our third-party vendor compliance? 
We need to check in with third-party vendor pro vendors and processors to see that they are complying with GDPR. They are not compliant. It's crucial to ask them to become so. Otherwise, we might not be able to use them. 